One million PCs could be vulnerable to a Windows worm, 12 million patients were hit in the Quest Diagnostics data breach, and Apple is bringing security to WWDC. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for June 4th, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. It's time for a quick shout out. This one goes out to John, 8, Matt, Richard, and Pyros, who joined the Patreon team this week. I would also like to say thank you to everyone who contributes to my content on alternative platforms at snubsy.com support, where you can go to support the show directly. I'll put that link in the show notes, and of course, as always, if you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash threatwire. And now on to the news. About two weeks ago, Microsoft released a patch for a critical remote code execution vulnerability in their remote desktop services. The vulnerability is CVE 2019-0708, which has a patch available as of May 14th. Now, Microsoft warned that this is a wormable vulnerability, meaning that it could propagate from one computer to another similar to WannaCry in 2017. Nearly 1 million connected computers worldwide are at risk of infection from this, and Microsoft believes that an exploit is already in existence. The vulnerability, which is dubbed Blue Keep, can execute malicious code on an exploitable machine with no interaction from the user. This could be triggered remotely from the connected and infected machine. Now, since it does not require any authentication to get access, and it allows an attacker to do remote code execution, it is seen as a high severity issue. Issue. Although some of Windows' older operating systems are not supported as of 2019, they still decided to push patches for Windows 2003, XP, and Vista, along with newer Windows 7. Windows 8 and 10 are not affected. Well, unfortunately, Microsoft had to make another post on the 30th, explaining that WannaCry did not attack until two months after that patch was released, which means many vulnerable networks and machines were not updated in a timely fashion and in turn were affected. Many in the security industry have repeated Microsoft's advice of updating ASAP and patching as several white hat hackers have come forward stating that they were able to create dangerous proof of concepts that could weaponize BlueKeep. ESET security security evangelist, the SANS organization, and Errata Security all recognize the potential threat and publicly warn their readers and customers. According to security ledgers, Siemens Health and Ears products run on Windows and are at risk, as are several other medical devices and IoT gadgets. Now, if you are worried about your own devices being vulnerable, do these steps. Disable RDP services if you don't use them, block port 3389 with a firewall, and enable network level authentication. And of course, update to the most recent Windows patch. That's probably the best move. According to a release published on June 3rd by Quest Diagnostics, a medical testing company with labs all across the United States, the billing correction service used by Quest called American Medical Collection Agency, or AMCA for short, was hit with a data breach. AMCA notified Quest Diagnostics of the breach on May 14th and later on May 31st, updated them with the total affected users, which amounted to 11.9 million patients. AMCA does billing corrections for Optum360, who is a Quest contractor and a unit of United Health Group Inc., hence the connection between the two. Quest outsourced all of their billing operations to Optum360, who then contracted AMCA. Now, the company believes information obtained in the breach included personal information like financial data, social security numbers, credit card numbers, and medical information. However, no laboratory results were included in the breach. Quest Diagnostics did explain in their update that they weren't able to validate the accuracy of the content received from AMCA, nor could they verify which patients were affected specifically. Quest has suspended any collection requests with AMCA for the time being. AMCA believes the breach occurred between August 1st of 2018 through March 30th of 2019. This is the second breach with Quest Diagnostics data since 2016, when 34,000 patients had their data stolen. In that case, the breach occurred directly via their patient portal, not a third-party provider. AMCA stated to Bloomberg that they took down their web payment page, moved online payments to another third party, and retained security experts. 
Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. If you supported Threatwire and TechThing, you probably saw the news last week that we are sunsetting TechThing and closing down that Patreon account this month. Now, while TechThing is ending, know that Threatwire is considered a completely different entity, even though they shared the same host and for quite some time shared the same studio. So Threatwire is not going anywhere. And if anything, this gives me more time to devote to Threatwire and to my Patreon. Patreon page. So of course, if you are interested in getting access to the Discord server, the audio RSS feed, a security headlines, a Google Hangout with me, and a whole lot more, even if it's just one or two bucks a month, hit that button to become a Patreon supporter because it all helps and it shows me that you appreciate the work that I'm putting in for the show. And also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons, these ones, for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. Thank you. Apple's WWDC is currently happening till the 7th in San Jose, California, and this year they have introduced some new security features to their lineup of products. iOS 13 is getting a lot of security love, with Apple's SVP of Software Engineering, Craig Federighi, saying that the company's new privacy protections are made to limit location tracking in apps and limit data sharing during app logins. The feature getting the most press is the new Sign In with Apple button. This will be a single sign-in feature that lets a user authenticate with an Apple ID instead of a social media or email account for apps like Facebook. Unlike Google or Facebook single sign-in platforms, which could be used to track you, Federighi says the Apple login will not reveal personal or location data, nor would it be used to track app activity or profile users. Sign-in with Apple will mask your email address and other personal information, but will still allow you to sign into and use the application. Upon signing in, a user will be able to customize what data the app can see, like your real name, and can let you hide your email address, which I consider to be another feature. So that second feature will be anonymous emails. Since some applications still require an email address to sign in, Apple Login will allow users to create a randomized email address that will automatically forward emails to their real email address, thereby hiding their actual contact details. It'll include two-factor authentication and the ability to disable those emails if they get sold to a scammer, for example. This will be excellent for security, especially if an app has a data breach and the email address is leaked, but it could also have serious implications for victims of stalking, harassment, doxing, or trolling. I'm also curious how this will work if you lose your phone and you don't know what your anonymous email address is. How are you going to log into that app in the future? The sign in with Apple feature will have to be included by developers to be integrated with their apps, but due to those security controls, we may not see it widely accepted by the those developers. Lastly, Apple announced much stricter location controls for users. In iOS 13, a user can opt into sharing a location with an app on a one-time basis, so when that session ends and the app is closed, that data will also disappear. Apps will not be able to triangulate user location data based on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on iOS 13 as well. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.